again. Uh oh. Time to relax and forget each care. Yes. Just settle back in your easy chair. Great. Here is entertainment for you. Okay. You'll find it so enjoyable to deny. So listen to all from beginning to end, 'cause your friend is an idiot. John Ford is he. You know, I hate to start off the program this time around for the、uh, evening ranker, the John Ford podcast. This would be number thirty-nine for those of you keeping track of such things. Anyways, I, I hate opening with an apology, but I'm a little late in doing、uh, doing one. You know, I keep telling myself、ah, I do a little segment here, a little segment there, and pretty soon I got a whole podcast. But I just get busy with real work that actually pays money, as opposed to this podcast, which is basically just an excuse. It's me paying a little bit of money to Lisbon every month so that I can shoot off my big mouth and they can host it. And you know, all I gotta do is record the damn thing and put it together. Whoa, okay. Which is pretty darn easy for me to do because I got the groovy Pro Tools and I have been editing audio for a millennia. Well, it would seems like、uh, a millennia, anyways. So, anyways, welcome to another edition of this podcast. I thought we'd do something a little bit different as we start off today. I was kind of going through some of the、uh, different sound bites of the week, and I thought maybe we'd go through those, and、uh, I would comment and say stupid and snarky things about them. So we'll probably do that. One thing that really、uh, is <laughs> caught my eye this week,、uh, last week and this week, and I haven't really said too much about it,、uh, is is this whole thing with Jesse Smollett. I guess that's how you pronounce his name. I had never heard the word、uh, name Jussie before, but you know, I guess he's got it. That's right. You can name your kid anything you want: Dweezil, Moon Unit, whatever makes you happy. Yes. So now it's. I don't, I don't know if you know the whole background on this thing, but basically, he said that he was attacked by a bunch of right wing crazies with "Make America Great Again" hats who said homophobic and racist slurs. And over the course of a couple of weeks, it started to come out that maybe it kind of looks like, according to Chicago police and a lot of the sources, he's kind of made all this up. Oh my God! It's all just BS. Now people have speculated on why he he did that, if it is indeed BS, and it certainly looks like it might be that way. You got to be kidding me! I'd hate to fall into the trap that a lot of the、uh, media pro- professionals—I'll say that and wiggle my fingers in quotes—professionals. Uh, who immediately started off saying this was horrible? This attack, you know, nobody said well the, the, the alleged attack. Very few people did,、uh, and everybody's got their own. You know, I realize it. Everybody has their own prejudices on how they view the news. I kind of looked at it from the middle. I, I didn't know if the guy was telling the truth or not. I, I just, you know, I thought if it did happen, it was reprehensible. It's just, and it, outside of that, it's just not very nice. It's just not a nice thing to do. No. So it's now come to light that the two people that were he said white guys wearing "Make America Great Again" hats, he, according to them, these two guys who I think are from Nigeria, yeah, black guys,、uh, they said that he hired them to do this whole thing, and allegedly the reasoning behind it is because he was worried about losing his job on his TV show Empire. Guy's an actor and. A musician. I don't know anything about his acting or music. Never watched the show. Never heard his music, so I couldn't tell you anything about it. And now it's come out that he also got a letter like a few weeks ago before this attack. And now the FBI that was like a racial, you know, you're you're gonna die. That the FBI and the Postal Service are now looking into the the fact that maybe he sent the letter to himself. Something smells around here. And the Chicago detectives. It came out today that they're seeking his financial records. I guess they want to look into that to find out if he really did pay these two guys to do this attack. The thing, and 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 I won't really comment on this too much outside of the fact that、um, the thing that really gets me is it's the same sort of thing we've seen before. Look at the Judge Kavanaugh thing, where we're supposed to just believe the alleged victim and not wait for the facts to come out. And that seems like what's happened here. Yeah. And this happens on both the right, the lunatic right, and the lunatic left. We view the news and we view things that happen through our own lens, so that it reinforces what we already believe, as opposed to letting time run its course 
and learning the facts. You know, here's a bunch of different pieces of people talking about, and, and I'll interrupt this as it goes along, probably because it needs interruption, <laughs> you know. <laughs> this is people in the media and, you know, move with stars and swimming pools and, uh, you know, people in the public eye all commenting on this Jussie thing shortly after it happened and during the few weeks before we've now allegedly found out that the whole thing was a bunch of BS. Two suspects who were apparently wearing Make America Great Again hats. I'm disgusted by people who wear hats that say MAGA, Make America Great Again. I don't like that it's being put out there in the media that this is a right. possible yeah. hate crime. Right. And the media has really cast so much doubt on his story, which I find so personally offensive. Well, wait a second here. What's wrong with wearing a hat? Well, the hat says, make America great again. So she finds the hats offensive. And then the the third woman that talked there, I don't know who these people are. I mean, I suppose I could do some research and, and find out who they are. But now the, the, the third woman on there said that the media, and this is not what I saw, that some in the media have been saying that it was an alleged attack. Well, that's how you handle those sorts of things. That's how you handle the news. If it's not a fact, you have to say alleged. Because nobody knows what the true facts are. So that's just a reporter being safe, making sure that they're telling the truth in the best way that they know it. So people on the left, you know, use this whole thing to reinforce what they already feel. And he has to be believed. We must believe him. Don't believe anything until you hear the rest of the facts, man. Coming from the President of the United States, he's dog whistling every day. Uh, and this is America in 2019. Connect the dots. Okay, that was obviously Maxine Waters, the Mensa member extraordinaire in the U.S. Congress. This is what happens. If you are in a position of power and you hate people and you want to cause suffering to them, you go through the trouble. You spend your career trying to cause suffering. What do you think is going to happen? To me, this is like domestic terrorism. Two white men in ski masks brutally attacked him, calling him the F word and the N word. Was, was no alleged there. I mean, they just take it as face value as fact. And, and it's like I said, no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, you just use it to reinforce whatever your particular views are. That's the really sad part of this whole thing. Well, uh, I feel like we're living in the 60s and the 50s again. You want to build a wall for somebody, build a wall for some of the white nationalists and supremacists in this country and keep them out because, you know, it's, it's, they're making racism okay again. Essentially terrorism and you wonder like how deep it goes jesse is love that's who he is i think this is and his co-star that's on the all show. he knows so in this situation hate won't win mm -hmm. it will not i just told him to walk in his truth and now we're finding out that his truth is not truth at all it's a fantasy it's fiction that allegedly according to reports according to what's being said by the chicago police through their handlers he made the whole damn thing up. It was all just a bunch of BS. To put it in a nutshell, to put it you know, in a nice little encapsulated form, he said that a couple of white guys tried to beat the crap out of him, put a rope around his neck that was a noose, and yelled uh, anti, you know, real racist things and, uh, and anti-gay things at him. He was able to get a couple of punches in and uh, ran off and you know, went to the hospital with broken ribs, which he later said, no, I didn't go to the hospital and I didn't have broken ribs. They were just a little bit bruised. So now it's come out that he made the whole damn thing up, allegedly, according to the sources from within the Chicago Police Department. And not only did he make the whole thing up, but he hired the guys to do it who were not white guys. They were a couple of black guys. How black were they? Well, they were from Nigeria. You'd think if the guys were from Nigeria, they'd come up with a better scam than that. Those Nigerians are awful good at scams. You get email, don't you? And it's also come to light that he probably, maybe, it could be, allegedly, wrote that <laughs> letter to himself. If you've seen pictures of it, it's like in crayon, and it's also got block lettering that it, somebody cut out of the magazine. The Postal Service and the FBI are saying he probably did this himself. He set the whole thing up. Man. I mean, personally, I don't think, the, you know, I hope the guy doesn't end up going to jail for any of this, but it's entirely possible. If all this is true, if he really did all this, what a dumbass. It's the John Ford Podcast, the evening rancor. So did you see the latest outrage? Not yet. It, it's hard to keep track of which one it 
possibly might be because there's one about every 15 minutes these days on the internet or Weber tubes. This one is dealing with John Wayne, cowboy movie star from the past. I want to party with you, cowboy. Somebody dug up a 1971 Playboy interview. Now, here's a question for you. What are social justice warriors doing reading Playboy interviews anyways, even if they are 50 years old? Oh, my God. SJWs aren't supposed to read Playboy. 1971 had a particularly uh, interesting climate as far as politics, and it was a changing time. Now, this doesn't justify what John Wayne said. Basically, you know, I guess what everybody's upset about, because, you know, people have to be upset about things. It's, it's just really important that we have to be upset about things. And basically what he said was that, yeah, he was a white supremacist. He believed in white supremacy. You got to be kidding me. Okay, not probably the best statement anyone could ever make, but let's look at it in 1971 context. And besides... Now, the guy was born at the turn of the last century. I think it was 1907 was when he was born. Trying to fit in what somebody said 50 years ago into the current social climate, it seems to me like it's an exercise in insanity. <laughs> Things people believe or people thought 50 years ago, is it's, it's just not going to be where we're at today. No. Okay, you're, you're outraged. What are you going to do? You're never going to pay for another John Wayne movie ticket again? You know, he's not making any more movies. He's been dead for decades. I think he died in the late 70s. I don't think he's worried about getting work. He's right. You're right. I don't think he's worried about much of anything. So where are you going to focus your outrage? What are you going to do? Make them take his Hollywood star back? Oh, yeah. Did he win any Academy Awards? Take away his Academy Awards? No, you're basically just outraged because you love to be outraged. To show the world how woke you are on Twitter so that you can create your little Twitter mobs and go after somebody. I'm going to pray for y'all. Oh, God, I hope nobody digs up anything from your past that somebody's not going to like. Because let me tell you, we're all not like little pristine perfect people. People do bad things. People say stupid stuff. Don't judge everybody for something they may have said, especially 15 years, 50 years ago. An artist should be judged by their work. You, know, you have to ask yourself, when will this offense archaeology end? And that's really what it is. It's digging up things from the past so that we can be offended today. And if you think about it, it's really silly. Offense archaeology. You know, if you dig hard and long enough, you're bound to find something that you don't like about pretty much anybody, including yourself. <laughs> and judging it by your view today is just, you know, like I said, an, an exercise in insanity. Let's be really honest here. No. Artists. Like all people of historical importance, whether they be writers or musicians or actors or even industrialists, people of importance from our past should be judged by their works, not necessarily their beliefs, especially beliefs that are decades or even centuries old. You know, you can dig up anything on anybody. If we digged hard enough, we could, you know, Picasso, Bob Dylan, James Joyce, Little Richard, John Lennon, Michelangelo, Monet, Van Gogh, guy was nuts, Mark Twain. They've tried to dig up, you know, on him with that offense archaeology. Hemingway, well, he certainly had opinions. Tolkien, by God, the man was a Catholic. We can't read him. Chekhov, Oscar Wilde. This offense archaeology is getting out of control, and if you, if you really look at it, the entire thing is just stupid. People just need to be offended by something on Twitter. You know, they want to feel important. They want to just tweet out their thing. Look at me. It's all about me. I'm doing a handstand on the beach. I'm important. Well, you know what? You're not that important, bucko. It's like from last week. What was the thing? It's, it's Like I said, I, I can guarantee you there will be something offensive that hits the Twitter sphere, the Twitter sphere every week. Mm -hmm. Last week it was what? Katy Perry's shoes. Everybody said that her shoes that she was selling were racist. So she had a pair of white shoes and a pair of black shoes. And on each of the shoes, it had a couple, I mean, they're really ugly, a <laughs> couple of eyeballs, I think a nose. I can't, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. And big, like, red lips. Like makeup, like, with lipstick on them, what they look like. Really, really stinking ugly. That's what people should be upset about. Yes. Instead... They were called racist, the black ones. Of course, not the white ones. That the shoes were blackface. How do you have blackface shoes? <laughs> oh, good God almighty. Come on, give me a break. 
Katy Perry even came out and said, I'm sorry, I'm really saddened by the design of the, quote, painful images of the shoes in blackface. <laughs> Give me a break. Heck. And they pulled them from the uh, retailers. They're, they're gone. Even Walmart got rid of them. If you really look at it objectively, this is silly. This is silly. Shoes? Racist? They're inanimate objects. They had a face painted on them. And the week before, the outrage was over Gucci to pull a jumper from its new collection after similar accusations about blackface. The real sin there is that the damn thing was 900 bucks and was basically kind of like a pull-up, but what do they call those, a balaclava, a baklava? <laughs> I don't know. I don't wear them. And it had big red lips on it. And it happened to be black knit. So it's a black face sweater. Some even went so far to say that the entire controversy was completely made up just to get more hits to the Katy Perry website. I'm not saying that. I really don't know. Haven't got a clue. But people have too much time on their hands and they want to make offense and they want to show their offense on the Twitter sphere and show how important they are and how woke they are and how they care about blackface shoes and blackface sweaters. And reality? They're contributing nothing positive to society. What are they contributing to society that's of any value, of any use? Answer me! You want to change something? Go out there and change something. But for God's sakes, don't say racist shoes and racist sweaters. The truth about the sweater and the truth about the shoes is they were both ugly as hell. Now, here comes the music. Well, it's great. You can go on the air. You can tell people the truth. Yeah, great. I'm the happiest guy. He's the luckiest guy. Cause I just bought a new Ford. From a wonderful dealer. Wow, what a dealer. For a Ford or a fine used car. Hi, this is Jerry Cosgrove about to ask passersby today's question, which is, what do you think of the present trends in women's fashion? Here comes a likely-looking gentleman. Uh, sir, may I have your name, please? Stick him up. Huh? Give me a watch. Uh, but I, 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 your wallet. Uh, but I, and I'll take that wire you're carrying there. It's the John Ford Podcast, the evening rancor. John Ford. Radio.